Let's go. The full message of new life. And let's read the first passage here. And uh, now a man named Ananias, together with his wife Sapphira, sold, also sold a piece of property. With his wife's full knowledge, he kept back part of the money for himself, but brought the rest and put it at the apostles' feet. Then Peter said, Ananias, how is it that Satan has filled your heart that you have lied to the Holy Spirit and have kept yourself some of the money you have received for the land? Don't, uh, didn't it belong to you before it was sold? And after it was sold, wasn't the money at your disposal? What made you think of doing such a thing? Have you not lied? You have not lied to men, but to God. When Ananias heard this, he fell down and he died, and great fear seized all who heard what had happened. Then the young men came forward, wrapped up his body, and carried out and buried him. About three hours later, his wife came in. Not knowing what had happened, Peter asked her, Tell me, is this the price you and Ananias got for the land? Yes, she said, that is the price. Peter said to her, how could you agree to test the spirit of the Lord? Look, the feet of the men who buried your husband are at the door and they will carry you out also. At that moment, she fell down at his feet and died. And the young men came in and finding her dead, carried her out and buried her beside her husband. Great fear seized the whole church and all who heard about these events. Let's pray. Father God, we just ask that you would bless the reading and the preaching of your word today. And Lord, we ask that there would be an open heaven between you and these people. The divine revelation would come straight from your throne room, straight to our heart, God. And may every person be able to say, it has been well, it has been good to be in the house of the Lord. And Holy Spirit, we just invite you to come right now. Come, Holy Spirit, anoint the word, anoint the preaching of the word. Lord, we need you more than anything. Hide me behind the cross, I pray, O oh God. So we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. wanted to go back to tell you um, Thursday when I came in, and, and we have... Uh, we have kids' church downstairs with uh, uh, Miss Lori, so it'll be a great time. So uh, if she wants to go down, she'll be safe. I guarantee it. Oh. Lori's a professional teacher. So Thursday, I go to uh, Rainier, and I, I still have an office there. I got all my books and stuff, and I was going to study. And so I, I come walking into the office, and um, uh, Pastor Jeff McCracken's office was open, and, uh, and uh, he was there talking to his assistant, uh, Mert Wyatt. And so I walk in there, and, and he goes, oh, oh, Nick, come in here, come in here. And, I, you know, I had my hands full of all the stuff that I have to do, and my, com my laptop, and I came in there, and he said, I'll just sit down. He said, I've got to tell you something. He said, man... We had, um, he said, Saturday night, my daughter was coming in from YWAM, and uh, she's coming in late, so we got to the airport, and, and by the time we got home, it was 1 in the morning. And so then we got up, went to church, and I said, well, I, I'm not going to preach today. I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to interview my daughter. So her daughter just came back. She was in Hawaii and YWAM here, for, and then she went and did some missions trips with YWAM. And so he said, what happened was he, you know, set up, he was doing an interview, and his, his, his daughter, Abby, um, she's a lovely, beautiful young gal, I don't know, she's 19 or 20, and uh, she starts telling all these crazy stories. She, in Mexico, she would go up to drug, drug cartel gang members and witness to them, and they would get saved. And she was down at the beach, and while she was down at the beach, um, the Lord, uh, you know, uh, told her that somebody, the group of guys over here, somebody's got a backache or back problems. Go pray for them. So she went back there, 
And she, she said, somebody, is there somebody here that has a back problem because um, I want to pray for you? Oh, no, we're fine. We're fine. So she started to walk away, and the Lord spoke to her and said, no, there's somebody there that has a back problem. So she turned around, and she went back, and she said, God just told me that somebody here needs their back to be healed. And he goes, well, you know, what? no, 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 there's, we don't want your prayer, but you can pray for this guy coming out of the water. And they were pulling a guy out of the water, and he had broken his leg. It was a compound fracture. The bone was sticking out of his leg. She went over there and started to pray for him. And as she prayed for him, the bone went back inside and knitted together. And by the time she was done praying, he jumped up on his feet and said, I'm healed. She started telling stories like that. And then, uh, so uh, if you know, if you know Pastor Jeff, he's always like, you know, we gotta like, he's always trying to control everything. <laughs> I'll tell him that to his face. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, every once in a while we'd have to say, just calm down, okay? But so he he uh, he, he he interviewed his daughter and. Uh, so at one o'clock, they were supposed to go over to his dad's house for his birthday party. And so uh, he's so uh, they're going to do an altar call. And so he, and he he gives this kind of altar call after Abby tells all these stories. Says, How many would like to have these kind of experiences? Well, everybody. Wow. Boy, they just jumped out. Are we going to have a uh, Abby pray for you? So they just all come. The whole church just like flocks down in front. And so she's she's standing there and and she doesn't pray for people all she does is she starts speaking in tongues and she paces back in front of them and for like 15 minutes and jeff goes like well come on abby because it's like pray for these people all of a sudden people start falling out under the power just boom 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 and and she still for another 15 minutes, for a half an hour, she's just walking back and forth. It's just God. The Holy Spirit just falls on people. And they start, they just, they just start falling down. And after she'd been there for like, you know, uh, just a half an hour, then she starts praying for people and things just start happening. And he's like looking at his watch. Well, it's already past one o'clock. And uh, he said, sometime after 2 o'clock, we finally got out of there. And then they had their graduation for their school of ministry that night. And so uh, um, they do something. They bring uh, uh, some people in that prophesy over people. And uh, I guess um, they brought in a couple of guys. I, I don't know if I've ever met them before, but they started, you know, they... They go through their little graduation ceremony and then they start, you know, praying for people and they pray for each one of the students and give them a prophetic word. And so as they were doing this, all of a sudden, just the power of God just begins to fall. And uh, I guess one gal, uh, he was holding her hand and she was sitting in a chair and she just kind of like slumped, you know, under the God's power. So so the guy just picked up her foot and just kept on going. <laughs> And, and, you know, they, they, they had like a, a, a prayer time. And he said, uh, we were there, we lingered around the altar until probably it was like, um, uh, he said, I didn't get any dinner. So um, he said, we rolled into McDonald's about 10 till before it closed through the drive through You know what? How many would like to see that happen here? Amen. How many would like to see that in every church? Yeah. Amen. I think we've been going through, we've gone through this period where this pandemic, and, but I believe the reason that, um, I believe that everything that was prophesied is going to happen. It's going to happen. And the reason that Satan is fighting so hard 
is because I think we are on the verge of one of the greatest revivals that we've ever seen. Satan, is, Satan has been doing his absolute worst. But you know what? Greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. And, and uh, you know, you shouldn't say this, but every once in a while, maybe, maybe we should have some people drop dead in the service. That would really... Here's my first point. I have five points in this message this morning. Usually I have three, but I have five. The first one is treachery exposed. There's a conspiracy is unmasked. You know, when I, when I studied this, I, I'm, I tell you what, there, is, there has been a conspiracy that has been going on. Do you agree with me? And it's going to be unmasked. Um, I'm, I'm using up all my preaching time here telling stories, but, but, uh, if you get a chance, uh, if you ever watch Amanda Grace, Grace and Glory, his, his glory dot me on the internet, uh, they do an interview with Dana Coverstone and John Rebone or something like that. And I think almost, almost everybody saw Dana Coverstone's dreams you know, his most, most viral video. We comes back and, and that John interprets the dream. You got to listen to it. It makes a lot more sense. But there, there has, the, this conspiracy here in the Bible was unmasked. And I believe we're living in a time where the, there's conspiracies that are going to be unmasked. So, um, treachery exposed. A conspiracy unmasked. Not only did the Holy Spirit empower the believers effectively to proclaim the gospel to the lost, he also enabled them to challenge threats. uh, He enabled them to challenge threats to the spread of the gospel from within their own ranks. The story of Ananias and Sapphira is one such example. See, we are going to have we are going to have uh, challenges from the outside, and we are also going to have challenges from the inside. But through the power of the Holy Spirit, we can be able to determine what's going on. Amen. And we need to know at times there might be there might be somebody that uh, would give us problems from the inside. But you know what? The Holy Spirit can protect us from that. Satan has so filled your heart, just as one can be filled with the Spirit, there exists the possibility that Satan or his demonic agents can also fill or influence one's heart. Or the Holy Spirit revealed to Peter the conspiracy of Ananias and Sapphira, For how else could he have known what was in uh, their hearts? This indictment is a Lucan example of the operation of the gift of distinguishing, or as the King James says, discerning uh, of spirits, or distinguishing between spirits. Uh, You have lied to the Holy Spirit. You agreed to test the Spirit of the Lord. To sin against the work and the mission of God is to sin against and test the, the Holy Spirit. If the glory of God was so so prevalent, that's where we want to be. It's where the glory of God is so prevalent in this church that if somebody comes out against the very mission of God and comes against the Holy Spirit, then all of a sudden they would be struck dead. I think that would put the fear of God in Astoria. It's interesting that when I was, went back and restudied this passage and I, I read through the Passion and I read one of the footnotes, um, the, the, the Aramaic translation, Sapphira means uh, uh, she has said that she was renowned for her beauty. You know what the thing is? is 
um, God, we don't care if you're good looking or ugly, all right? We love you all. But unfortunately, you're all good looking. And your pastor's not very good looking. But he married a good looking woman, all right? But you know that there are some people who think that because they might look better than a lot of people or they have certain privileges that the rules don't apply to them. And I think that was part of the problem in this whole situation. Um, so that's, that was one of the things. Um, Luke 20, 22, 3, Then Satan entered Judas, called Iscariot, one of the twelve. And also Luke uh, twenty two thirty one. Simon, Simon, Satan has uh, asked to sift you like wheat. Here's the first point under point number one is this. The Holy Spirit enables us to proclaim the gospel to the lost, to expose and challenge threats to the spread of the gospel from within their own ranks. And then under the influence of the Holy Spirit or satanic spirit, guard your heart so you won't be used as a pawn of the enemy. This is why we need the operation of the gift and the distinguishing or discerning between spirits. Even, even remember the this, this story about Peter. Um, he, he came up and said, Jesus, you're the Son of God. And, and Jesus said, Peter, that was the most amazing thing ever. God revealed that to you. And then two seconds later, Jesus said, well, I'm, I'm going to die on the cross for the sins of the world. And, and Peter pulled him aside and said, no, 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 Lord. Don't, that's never going to happen. If anybody comes after you, we'll kill them first. Because I got a sword. But what did Jesus say? Get me, get me, get behind me, Satan. See, sometimes we might have the best intentions, but the motive of Satan. We need to have the discerning of spirit. Even in your own mind. I think the Bible says to bring every thought under what? Subjection. And uh, sometimes we have thoughts, and they're great thoughts. They come from God. Sometimes they come from us. They're not so good, or sometimes they're great thoughts. But sometimes we have thoughts that might come from the enemy. But we need to hold on and discern what spirit it is. If you, if you feel like the Holy Spirit grieve inside of you, then you know that's a check in your spirit. 1 Corinthians 12.10, to another miraculous powers, to another prophecy, and to another uh, distinguishing between spirits, or discerning of spirits. To another speaking in different kinds of tongues, and still to another the interpretation of tongues. What does this say about Jesus? Let's go to the next passage, verse 12. It says, The apostles performed many miracle signs and wonders among the people, and all the people used to meet together in Solomon's colonnade, and no one else dared join them. And though they were highly regarded by the people, nevertheless, more and more men and women believed in the Lord and were added to their number. As a result, people brought the sick into the street and laid them on beds and mats, so at least Peter's shadow might fall on some of them as they passed by. Crowds gathered also from the towns around Jerusalem, bringing their sick and those tormented by evil spirits, and all of them were healed. Man, praise God, what a revival. That, wouldn't that be amazing when Pastor Steve walks down the street and just his mere shadow <laughs> touches people, would heal people. I'm pretty sure that's going to happen. It's possible. <laughs> Not on cloudy days. <laughs> Wouldn't you like to be in a revival like that? This was amazing. 
Here's my second point, proclamation and demonstration. What Peter, uh, I guess what Luke did here was he, uh, he talked about signs and wonders are the essential true part of proclamation. Um, according to Paul, the gospel was not fully proclaimed until it was clearly presented and powerfully demonstrated. Proclamation and demonstration are two sides of the same gospel coin. In evangelistic ministry, signs and wonders help to open the hearts of people to the message of the gospel for an example of miracles, wonders, and signs. Peter's shadow, though, though the text does not explicitly state anyone that actually got healed by Peter's shadow, we can reasonably assume that some were. This manifestation of God's power fits into the category of extraordinary miracles, such as the curing of illness and the exorcism of evil dear, uh, spirits by cloths uh, touched by Paul's body. If God grants such miracles, we rejoice. However, they are not to be viewed as normative practices in the church. You know what? I've, I've been in the ministry. I've been, I grew up in Pentecost. I've seen some weird, strange things that happen in church. Have you? Yeah. And just because something strange happened doesn't mean that it's normal. One of the things that, that, that happens is that many times um, there will be a great revival. And uh, I remember down in Sacramento, a lot of guys went to the Brownsville revival. And then um, uh, Janice and I went there. We were blessed by it. And then people came back and they got all excited. And I tell you, there was there. I mean, I went to a, couple, a, a pastor's prayer meeting once that afternoon and the Holy Spirit just descended I, I wore contacts at the time. I cried so hard under that my contacts floated, almost floated off my eyes. And but it was it was powerful. It was powerful. But the thing the thing is, is God, God does something at one place, but he never does the same thing in two different places. We. We want to see the glory of God. And uh, you, might, you might go to a revival, and if you just come back, and it's, it's kind of like this. Well, if we just do everything that they did, we'll, we'll see the exact same thing. Well, I, I don't know if it works that way. Yeah, it doesn't. But whatever happens... You got to give God the glory. God has a unique plan for us. How many want to see a move of the Holy Spirit? Amen. 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 Wouldn't it be great instead of Pride Month? We have Holy Spirit Month. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. If you meet one of those confused individuals on the street, Go up and ask them, say, can I pray for you about something? Because Jesus loves them. And he will bend over backwards to reach them. Called to be competent as ministers in the spirit. 2 Corinthians 3, 6, he made us competent as ministers of his new covenant, not of the letter of the, but of the spirit, for the letter kills, but the spirit gives life. We are called to be competent as ministers of the spirit. God wants to demonstrate his grace and power through us in the manifestations of spiritual gifts and fruits. Such manifestations should occur both in the church as within Ananias and Sapphira and in the marketplace as when the apostles perform many signs among the people. Fully proclaimed, clearly presented, powerfully demonstrated. Fully proclaimed, Clearly presented, powerfully demonstrated. 
I will not venture to speak of anything except what Christ has accomplished through me in leading the Gentiles to obey God by what I have said and done, by the power of signs and miracles, through the power of the Spirit. So from Jerusalem all the way around to Elycrium, I have fully proclaimed the gospel of Christ. Here's the point. If we want to see God move, we got to give God the glory. It's not, it wasn't Paul. It wasn't Peter. It wasn't Steve Mile. It wasn't John Kilpatrick. It wasn't John Arnott. It wasn't Brother Seymour. It was the Holy Spirit. We are just willing vessels to Him. When we are willing vessels for Him, He can do great and mighty things. Lord, may we be humble. Because God, we have a lot to do. You've, you, you've called us to reach this city. And we can't reach it on our own strength. For this to happen, we must remain full of the Spirit and open to His voice. Such a release of spiritual gifts can bring great blessing to the church and result in dramatic advance to the gospel. I love what Pastor Steve's doing in our worship. We, more than anything, when, when we come here, we want to encounter the presence of God. Everything else is secondary. Verse 17. What does this say about me? The high priest and all of his associates who were members of the party of the Sadducees were filled with what? Jealousy. They arrested the apostles and put them in a public jail, put them in the public jail. But during the night, an angel of the Lord opened the door of the jail and brought them out. Go stand in the temple courts, he said, and all the people and tell the people the full message of this new life. Isn't it interesting? See, angels are, are, have, have not been commissioned to preach the gospel. You know, we're, we're going to, in a, in a few weeks, we're going to come across where an angel shows up to uh, Cornelius and says, um, go to uh, this seaside town and ask for Peter to come and show you or to tell you uh, about the gospel. Well, you know, I mean, if it was me, I would have said, you know, to the angel, I said, well, why didn't you tell him? Why didn't you preach the gospel? Because angels are not ordained and established to proclaim the gospel. You are. You are called to proclaim the gospel. Isn't that great? that we can do something that angels can't do? At daybreak, they entered the temple courts, and as they had been told, they began to teach the people. When the high priest and his associates arrived, they called together the Sanhedrin, the full assembly of the elders of Israel, and they sent, uh, at, and sent to the jail for the apostles. But on arriving at the jail, the officers did not find them there. So they went back and reported, We found the jail securely locked with the guards standing at the door. But when we opened them, we found no one inside. On hearing this report, the captain of the temple guard and the chief priest were puzzled, wondering, wondering what would have come of this. Then verse 25, Then someone came and said, Look! The men you put in jail are standing in the temple courts and teaching the people. At that time, the captain went with his officers and brought the apostles. They did not use force because they feared that the people would stone them. Verse 27. 
having brought the apostles, uh, they made them appear before the Sanhedrin to question uh, by the high priest. We gave you strict orders not to teach in his name, in this name. He said, yet you have filled your teaching with uh, you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching and, de- and are determined to make us guilty of this man's blood. Well, if it sticks. Then verse 29, then Peter and the other apostles replied, we must obey God rather than men. The God of our fathers raised Jesus from the dead, whom you have killed by hanging on a tree. God exalted his own. Uh, God exalted him to his own right hand as the prince and savior that he might give repentance and forgiveness of sins to Israel. We are witnesses of these things. And so that the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to those who obey him. Here's the next point is command and obedience. Command and obedience. Once again, the Sadducees of of whom uh, were based in Jerusalem and the temple, including the high priest and his close friends, were upset. This time they were filled with jealousy or indignation, as the King James. The Greek word zeleo uh, means zeal or enthusiasm in a good sense, or it can mean in the worst kind of jealousy. It is not hard to see how the word is used here. It also implies a factional spirit and a zeal for the Sadducean teaching against the resurrection of the dead. And we can be sure they hated to see the crowds gathering around the apostles. They were probably jealous also because the name of Jesus rather than theirs were being proclaimed. There's something about that 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 uh, cognitive disconnect you know what? When God begins to move, there's going to be people that are going to get upset. True? Beloved, don't be discouraged. Count it an honor. Like uh, William Booth, somebody got so mad at him when he was street preaching, uh, spat right in his face. And one, of, one, and one of the people came up and said, wanted to wipe it off. He said, don't you dare. That's one, of my, that's, that's one of my medals of honor from the Lord. We need to have a church that has a backbone. And we're not going to get a backbone unless we get full of the Holy Spirit. Here's the next point. God delivers and resources witnesses. Empowering the presence and the spirit enabled the church in Jerusalem to fulfill its evangelistic mandate. Note the witnessing, the empowering, and the activity of the spirit. And then also note that we are called to witness. The things that we are called to witness is the message of Jesus' crucifixion, resurrection, and exaltation to the right hand of God. In doing this, we must urge the people to repent and receive forgiveness and sins. I don't know. I I remember um, Charles uh, Crabtree uh, just passed away not too long ago. But I was at a conference once, and he said, you know, people used to come to me, and they said, oh, pastor, please pray for me. You know, I'm at my job. I'm just surrounded with the worst type of heathen people you could ever imagine. Please pray that I get a different job, that I'm surrounded by Christians. And he would go and grab their hand and of that dear brother or dear sister, and he would pray. He would say, oh, Lord God, I ask that you would just fill them with the Holy Ghost and send them back to those den of sinners that they might be a witness for you. Isn't that what God's called us to? To be witnesses for him. Notice that God resources witnesses. The Holy Spirit whom you have given and those who obey him. God gives the spirit to those who obey him. In context, the obedience spoken here is not in general obedience to the commands of God but specific obedience to the command and to be Christ's witnesses. The implication is that God will fill 
with the Spirit and empower those who are prepared to obey His command and preach the gospel to the lost. Verse four, uh, 33 says, When they heard this, they were furious and wanted to put them to death. And, but a Pharisee named Gamaliel, a teacher of the law who was honored by all the people, stood up in the Sanhedrin and ordered them to be put outside for a little while. And then he addressed them, Men of Israel, consider carefully what you intend to do with these men. Some time ago, Theotis uh, appeared, proclaiming to be somebody, and about 400 men rallied around him. He was killed, and his followers were dispersed, and it all came to nothing. After him, Judas the Galilean appeared in the days of the census and led a band of people in revolt. He, too, was killed, and his followers were scattered. Therefore, in the present case... I advise you, leave these men alone. Let them go, for if, uh, uh, for if their purpose or their activity of human origin, it will fail. But if it be from God, you will not be able to stop these men. You will only find yourself fighting against God. His speech persuaded them, and they called the apostles in and had them flogged, and they were ordered, ordered them not to speak in the name of Jesus, and they let them go. Here's my point number four, futility of fighting with God. The Sanhedrin took the lead against the apostles, but this time they had to enter, they had the entire Sanhedrin together, and it included some prominent Pharisees. And Gamaliel was, a, was an authoritative teacher of the law, and he valued highly by all the people. In the Jewish Talmud, he is said to be the grandson of Hillel, the most influential teacher of the liberal wing of the Pharisees, in, in contrast to the Shema. Hillel was held in high esteem uh, by all uh, later Orthodox Jews. Paul was trained by Gamaliel and because of one of his and became one of his most prominent students. Standing up, Gamaliel took charge of the situation and ordered that the apostles be taken out for a little while. Um, Here's the, here's the point. Gamaliel was wrong. You know what? If it's, it's, it's futility to fight against God. But there are a lot of people who, um, who are wrong and they succeed. I could probably take you to some churches that might be, we would consider cults. But he was right on this point. It's futile to fight against God. Amen? God is with us. Second Corinthians, Chronicles 13, 12 says, God is with us. He is our leader. His priest with their trumpets will sound the battle cry against you. Men of Israel, do not fight against the Lord, the God of your fathers, for you will not succeed. The spiritual problems need spiritual answers. Spiritual problems need spiritual answers. What is from God cannot be overthrown. It is true that it, that it is foolish to try to use physical means to overthrow uh, spiritual forces. I think this is... This is, this is one of the most important points that I could ever make here this morning, is this, is that, is that we cannot solve spiritual problems with physical solutions. We need spiritual solutions. I want to say this. What Gamaliel said was not true. But it's not true that everything of human origin soon overthrown and its, its followers scattered. There are many pagan religions, false doctrines, evil movements, and modern cults that maintain a following after many years. The judgment at the end of this age will bring upon them an end and all the things of God will continue. Gamaliel was a hypocrite. He did not accept the Jesus as Lord, nor did he admit that the signs and wonders done by the apostles showed Jesus was different from the former leaders who died. I, if, if God shows you a sign and a wonder and you don't come to him, 
What else is there that God can do for you? And sometimes people can be so educated that they can't see a move of God right in front of their face. True? Here's my last point. Can you say, hey man, he's finally done? <laughs> Don't be too enthusiastic, George. <laughs> Hurt my feelings. <laughs> Verse 41 and 42, the apostles left the Sanhedrin rejoicing because they had been counted worthy of suffering disgrace for the name. Day after day in the temple courts and from house to house, they never stopped teaching and proclaiming the good news that Jesus is the Christ. Last point is this, preaching and teaching in the temple and in homes. One of my favorite verses is Paul's admonition to his young apprentice, Timothy. Until I come, devote yourself to the public reading of scriptures, to preaching and to teaching. Do not neglect the gift which uh, was given you through prophetic message when the body of elders laid their hands on you. There's... Two methods of presenting the message of life. It's through preaching, the exhortation and teaching, doctrine. We're, we are called to, to devote ourselves to these primary tasks. And then there is the gift, the inward endowment, the impartation of the Holy Spirit. And there's two places where we can meet. It is in the large Greek gatherings, the temple, the sanctuary, and the homes, the small gatherings. I, I think there's just, you know, you boil ministry down to three things. Preaching the word. Teaching the word. And the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Paul told Timothy, devote yourself to that. Devote yourself to, to public preaching and reading the word. And devote yourself to, to teaching. I think if I remember that Greek word, devote, is like, it's, it's the same one they used of somebody who was an alcoholic. We need to be so devoted to preaching and teaching and the moving of the Holy Spirit, that we are addicted to it. Amen? I remember, I thought it was funny, where Rainier was and where my office is, right across the street is Fat Jack's Tobacco Shack. <laughs> and we had, had this really bad rainstorm and and they, and this was a few years ago. And uh, so we came in, it was on a Wednesday, and they ended up canceling um, Wednesday night ch church because people would have to, you know, when you, when you drove down in there, you'd have to drive down in this little dip. It was full of water. But my mighty ni Dodge Nitro just made it right through it, no problem. But, but, like one, uh, there was a minivan that went down there and got, got stuck and floated off into a ditch. And so, uh, so we, they, so, you know, I told the pastor, Brother Ernie Salinas was there, and, and uh, so we, we decided, well, maybe, maybe we better cancel because there had been a lot of rain and there were some drainage problems there. The, the parking lot was dry, but they People's cars might have stalled. But I tell you, Fat Jack's never closed. And I had one of the guys called from the church. He said, I, I heard maybe, you know, I, I said, well, I'm looking across the street, you know, and these people are desperate. They're having a Nicky fit so bad. They're willing to wade through water to get their cigarettes. <laughs> and you could see them out there. They had this, I mean, there was ladies with real expensive shoes, you know, and they were, they were like, 
And then, they, oh, man, I need those cigarettes. And they would just trot right across. You know, that's the way we should be about pursuing the presence of the Holy Spirit. Addicted. Yes. Oh, to God that we would be that committed to the church. Well, I, now I'm getting on a soapbox here, but I like, you know, uh, I like what uh, Robert Morris said a few weeks ago. He said, if you're home, just watching church on TV, I mean, if, if, if you don't feel safe to come to church, that's fine. Watch, watch on, you know, watch on live stream. That's great. But if you're just sitting home in your pajamas, because it's more convenient than coming to church, you're just being lazy. Just come to church. Hey, man? And we're glad you're here today. Praise God. <laughs> yes. What is the Holy Spirit saying to you today? I think the impetus of this chapter is this. We will not be ashamed to present the gospel. And we are going to strive to be full of the Holy Spirit. Be anointed. Preach his word. Be willing to be embarrassed. Be willing to have somebody spit in our face for the cause of Christ. And if you want to have that kind of commitment, why don't you stand to your feet? I want to pray for you. If you just want to be so committed to Jesus, to proclaim his word no matter what, no matter what the cost. Praise your name. Praise your name. If you have your heavenly prayer language, why don't you just take a moment and just pray in the spirit. Thank you, Lord. Father God, I just pray that you would just touch these people and fill them with your Holy Spirit, oh God. Fill them now with your Holy Spirit, oh God. And Lord, I ask that you would give us a passion to win the lost for Jesus. God, that we would have a passion like the apostles, that we would be so filled with the Holy Spirit, oh God, and fill the, fill the call upon our lives, oh God, that we couldn't, nobody could shut us up about Jesus. And Lord, that we wouldn't be afraid. God, I ask that you would remove from every one of us right now, remove the spirit of fear of man, oh God. Remove that spirit, oh God. Lord, where we would be able to stand up and say, it is better to do what God says than what man says. We don't care what the governor says. We don't care what the mayor says. We don't care what the president says. We don't care. We have to do what God says. And so, Lord, I ask that you would strike the fear of man from our hearts, O oh God. And, Lord, that you would fill us with the fear of God. 
and that we would follow hard after you, that we would be devoted to the preaching of your word and devoted to the teaching of your word and devoted to the gifts of the Spirit. Fill us with your Holy Spirit, I pray this day. Fill us now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Amen.